Hey everybody, Sam here and welcome back to Sam Craft. In today's video, I'm going to be continuing working on my workshop build. This is where I'm building a 12 by 20 storage shed inspired small workshop myself from the ground up. If you've not seen any of the previous videos in this playlist, there's a link to it down below. In addition to that, if you're here from the future and you want to see where exactly this build goes to the final project, that same link will take you to the full build playlist and you'll get to see everything in one stop. Today's video is going to bring you guys all through the entire framing process for the roof on my workshop. Without further ado, let's jump into it. I'm going to frame the roof with a 612 roof pitch. What that means is for every foot the roof goes in, it rises up six inches. That's going to make my ridge beam three foot off of the top of the wall. I've got to subtract the height or width of my header or ridge beam, which is seven and a quarter inches since it's a two by eight. So I'm going to cut the supporting structure beneath it to match that to give me an overall height of 36 inches. I'm going to go ahead and cut those down here on the saw horses. Go ahead and build myself little miniature supports and all that kind of thing. I'll measure my halfway points on the short walls, so here and there. I'll put the little support in place, and then we'll start raising this ridge beam up. I may call in my brother and his tractor for support, or I may just forge ahead and do it myself. I'm very bad for, well, okay, I've always had to do things myself, so I've come up with systems and methods for just working by myself, so it's hard for me to think and, and realize that if I stop and kind of get some help over, it might overall be easier. Usually I just push through it and do it myself. So um, I don't know. We'll see if I, I can get a hold of him, if he can get over here in time, because usually I don't think about these things until it's go time and um, I'll use them if I can. If not, I'll show you guys how I am going to raise up my 20 foot long ridge beam. Here's a spoiler alert. It's actually going to be two pieces. All right, three feet minus seven and a quarter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a quarter. So here's a little tip as far as cutting things. Uh, it would be, you know, it could be easier to have a chop saw on site, and I mean, we have one. I just didn't bring it. But if you don't have one of those, and you have a circular saw, if you just put a tick mark where you want it to cut, start your saw where it needs to be and then pl place your speed square beside it and let that be a guide. Let that be a rail you run beside. That way you don't have to put this here and put your whole pencil line and then follow it, which I mean, if you want to, you can, but I find it's quicker for me just to do it this way. So tick mark, a little X to show me what side of the mark the blade needs to go on, line it up and zip and be done. Now the biggest thing I want to do is make sure that these are exactly the same length, which they are, good. So these are my uprights. What I'm gonna build here using some scrap blocks and some screws is a cradle for the ridge beam to be held in place. The ridge beam will rest on top of this board, but to make sure it doesn't fall off and whop me in the head, I'm gonna put two scrap blocks sticking up about an inch right and left side. That way the ridge beam can go in here and it won't fall off as we wiggle things around and put you know, this whole thing together. I am using screws because I'll have to take this apart because it will be in my way for my rafters. So that is the reason we are seeing screws here versus the nail gun. So let's say this is the ridge beam. It's gonna be able to lay here in place, snuggle down between them and not fall off and squish my noggin. That's, that's what I'm doing. That's the explanation. First step is to find the center point of my wall. Since this shop is 12 feet wide, that's pretty easy. Just hang my tape over there and put a mark at six feet. And to make sure, Sam didn't deviate. I'll do the exact same thing from this other wall. All right, to make it easier to see that line across, just using my pencil and the factory square cut off from a stud. And I now have a line going all the way across. What I'm gonna do next is use a scrap piece of wood here, same thickness as my ridge support. I'm gonna hold it exactly where I want it. And then I'm gonna put some support blocks here left, right, and vertical. This will make sure this thing doesn't kind of kick out and give it a little more lateral support as everything's framed up and built. With those blocks in place, now I can fit my support here. It's a lot more stable connection. Obviously it's not rock solid, 
but that is also not the only connection to the wall. So I'll make sure these are flush. That was good. And then I'm gonna put a couple of nails in it at an angle to toenail this upright into the double top plate. Now I can add these other blocks vertically, kind of toenail everything together and build it up to become a pretty solid little base here. All right, as one last extra safety measure as we put everything together and hold it correct, I'm gonna put this diagonal piece here. This is sacrificial, it'll get pulled off later. This is gonna keep the ridge support left and right plumb. These have everything plumb front to back. This is gonna hold it left to right, which is very important as we're pushing and pulling and moving stuff around up here. All right, this ridge support structure is done and in place. It is a little wiggly jiggly still, but I mean, these are not strong joints in and of themselves, but the whole purpose of this member is to support the ridge beam, transfer the weight from here straight down into the wall. It is not in and of itself designed to be lateral tension, sway, pushy support. That all comes in play with the rafters. So one side done, one more to go. Alright guys, both of our ridge support beam structures are in place. Now what I'm going to do is lay down my 2x8s that will form the ridge beam. I'm going to go ahead and lay them down flat on the floor, scab together with some pieces of wood, joining the two. Then my brother's coming over with his tractor, fancy John Deere front loader tractor, and he's going to lift it up and help me set it in place. I could probably do it by myself, but it's one of those instances where, you know, if someone wants to help you, you really need to let someone help you. It's not always about yourself. Maybe it's good for them. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Plus, I mean, hey, showing off a tractor, another reason why we need a tractor, how we could use a tractor. Yeah, works for me. All right, in order for all of this to fit on the floor here, which the reason I'm putting on the floor is because this is a nice level flat surface to put these two boards together with. I'm gonna lay it diagonally. So right now I'm checking for the crown of my board. Now let me mark crown. Put that there. And then we'll get our second one. Same thing here, checking for crown. Big arrow. And then, ta-da. All right, I'm ready for my assistant to bring over some leftover wood. It is treated two by sixes. We're gonna screw these together. And then once everything's up and we have a couple of rafters supporting this, we will take these boards off. Because the way I have designed the roof, we're gonna have a rafter here, right on this edge of the board, and then here. There's gonna be a double rafter in this part just to add super support in this area. So this is temporary, but is necessary to hold it up in place and allow us to keep working. Here we go. We have our ridge beam scabbed together with some scrap two by six treated boards. Those things are at least three feet long, so that should be great. That also gives us a good lifting point right in the middle to hold up in place whenever my brother gets here with his tractor. Break time.
Alright, you ready? Yeah, I'm watching. Ow! <laughs> That's using your head! <laughs> Gotta tilt it back up on its edge. Nobody get under this. Here's a prime example of nothing ever goes according to plan. So, oh well, because that's my brother come by and try and help. His forks on his tractor just weren't long enough to reach to the center point to lift it all at once. And then honestly, this ridge beam being flush with the outside of the walls anyway, left him no extra overhang to pick up from one end and hold as I did the others. So, oh well, either way, I was able to shim me back and forth, back and forth and lift it up and get it clamped and nailed into place. So cool, it's up there, it's secure, no one got hurt and it's all good. It's part of the fun of building your own building. Before I start framing up the roof, I need to go ahead and sacrifice at least one 2x4, run it in the middle of the building, front to back, as we're looking front to back, and keep the long walls from bowing out as I add the rafters and kind of stress and put pressure on the system as a whole. Once that's in place, then I can go ahead and start assembling the rafters and putting the roof together. Can you come up here and climb on this side of the ladder? I'm gonna need you to mark that down there as I hold it up here. I have here one rafter, the very first rafter. And let's hope it's correct and it's literally officially the first rafter what you can see here is the bird's mouth this is let me hold it correctly for you guys <laughs> wind strong this is the part that's going to sit over top of the wall and lock things in nice and tight with the rafter on the other end is the part that attaches to our ridge beam if you're cutting ends don't take for granted that this is exactly 612 because that's not going to be the case with how this rafter is done with the bird's mouth it's really one of those things you got to hold it up there trace it cut it if it works great this is your template you then use this one to mark and cut every single other one for one half of your roof if you're like me and you're not a framerologist and not a perfectionist at building your your roof is not going to be dead center so i've found that the best way to get the best looking roof in the end is to measure and do one side or at least get one template for one side and then do another template for the other side at least that way if that roof is a half inch off from dead center the rafters and everything will be right and it'll work out best in the end all right we've cut our test piece or our hopeful first official rafter let me scuttle over there hold it up and we'll see that it's awesome I'm happy to say that the power of Sam and Angela combined gave us a perfect, perfect first template for our rafter. So we can go ahead and make replicated cuts for this whole side.
that's it guys roof is now framed up rafters are done another big old check off this to-do list i'm building this workshop There we go guys, another step done, another chunk of work marked off for this new workshop build. Now to answer the question some of you may be wondering, why did you stick frame your roof versus do trusses or build your own trusses? I just did that because that's what I'm comfortable doing. The three other workshops I've built with a gable style roof, I did the exact same ridge beam and rafter framing process. So it's kind of what I've already got in my head to know the order of operation and I can get a pretty good result in the end. So that's just a personal choice. I would definitely say that engineered trusses are gonna be the strongest and easiest option if you're doing a workshop of your own. However, it's probably also gonna be the most expensive to do. The middleman between engineer trusses and what I did is probably your own DIY trusses and is very commonly seen on shed build videos on YouTube. So maybe that's also what you want to do. Regardless, I think all three of those solutions are very adequate and they do just as fine. So I'm not really saying that you need to do this or that. They all work. The name of the game is to put a framing structure up above yourself to then sheathe and give yourself a roof and they all get you there. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them for me down below. Otherwise, take care, and I'll see you guys next time in the workshop.